All right. I want to talk a little bit about different diets and kind of your risk, I guess, is the way I put it when I thought about this idea in my head. Your risk with different diets um, is going to depend on certain things. So whether you're on a vegan diet, an omnivore diet, a carnivore diet, you're going to have inherent risk with every diet. I think this to me is like obvious. I know some people don't believe in the risks and I'm going to get to that in a second. But let's say an omnivore diet. There's an inherent risk, I think a higher risk with an omnivore diet and especially even a carnivore diet of heart disease than with a vegan diet. There's a higher risk of potentially diabetes, especially if you include junk food, okay? Um, there's, there's a higher risk of maybe cancer than in vegan populations, plant-based populations. And then let's say we're talking about a vegan diet. There's a definite risk of nutrient deficiencies because vegan diets are not the same as an omnivore diet, it's not basically like all kind of figured out for you. Like in a in a, a typical Western omnivore diet, all the nutrients are basically kind of there. So like your source of calcium, it's generally milk. That's that's what Western diet has kind of figured out, quote unquote, through years and years of just eating. Um, your calcium is going to come from milk. Some other cultures, their calcium might come from bones. But in a Western culture, generally your calcium is going to come from milk. Your omegas are going to come from fish. Your protein is going to come from meat, generally, and maybe some legumes, um, et cetera, et cetera. Your vitamin C is probably going to come from like oranges, okay, or whatever. This is the Western diet's like kind of safety of it is that it's all kind of planned out. Whereas on a vegan diet, you have to figure this stuff out. And I think over the years, people have been figuring it out better and better. But on a vegan diet, like your calcium isn't um, kind of intuitive. You have to either supplement it or eat lots of calcium rich vegan foods, which are like tofu, edamame, maybe broccoli, stuff like that, but you have to intuit it. You have to figure it out. And so it, on a vegan diet, there's a, a definite risk of nutrient deficiency type problems because of the fact that it's not really all figured out yet. I would say it's getting closer to be figured out, but it's not all figured out. So, and a lot of things you need to supplement. In my opinion, a vegan diet is not natural. It's not something that um, humans have ever done. So it's not to say that it doesn't work. And humans have lived on plants, like lots of plants at periods of time. But um, it's, it's not natural, in my opinion. And it does require supplementation. Again, in my opinion, I think... Um, Definitely B12 for sure, but I would say like protein, calcium, um, a good multi multivitamin, even like zinc, stuff like that is going to be, it helps to have a supplement and you kind of have to figure it all out. So that's the inherent risk of a vegan diet. I'm not going to go into carnivore diet. I think it's just a really risky diet all, all together, but maybe there's a healthy way to do carnivore diet. Now, I think what I'm going to say is going to upset some people, but that's never stopped me in the past, so I'm just going to say it. I think that the biggest risk with any diet, because I think you can have a healthy vegan diet. I know that's maybe controversial, especially in the community that follows my videos. And I think you can have a healthy omnivore diet. Carnivore, I'm not going to say. I don't know. I don't know that, that that's a... That's one that maybe maybe we'll discover one day that there is a healthy carnivore diet. But between the two, between plant-based and maybe more omnivore, I think you can be healthy. But the biggest risk when following either of these diets is 
in my opinion, getting bad information from some people who are kind of anti-establishment, anti-certain science. They don't believe in some of it. They think they somehow found the answer, quote unquote, um, because of their searching. Like, they know the dominant uh, consensus amongst scientists is this, let whatever it is, but they go the other way for whatever reason. I think that is the riskiest thing with any diet, whether you're omnivore or, or vegan, plant-based, is disbelieving in the dominant science. Because here's the thing, I'm thinking of people like Dr. McDougall, who told people, and Dr. Graham, who, Doug Graham, who told people that you don't need, you may not need B12 supplementation. This was in the past. I don't know if they've changed their minds. And um, you can get enough protein as long as you eat enough calories. This anti-establishment, like, we know this isn't true. It's it's pretty, like, well known that you need protein and you need B12. And yet, these people are telling you you don't need these things. I would also argue that there's people out there telling people that they don't have to worry about their cholesterol. They don't have to worry about... Um, their lipid numbers or whatever, that high is actually better. And this anti-establishment thing is hurting people as well. And I think there's already been some people coming out of the woodwork saying, look, I've been, I've had a heart attack. I've had a stroke after X years on this diet. And again, it's ignoring the, what's already been established by science. Science is not all bad. Um, I think nutrition science is actually on the ball about it. It's not telling you to eat vegan. It's also not telling you to eat omnivore. It's just saying these are the things we know. And I know a lot of people have lost faith in probably the establishment for whatever reason. But I do think nutrition science is very, very sound. These are people who have studied it their whole lives. And yes, there is some amount of industry influence, but... I think on the whole, like when you look at all the nutrition science from all around the world and put it all together, it all kind of leans in the same direction. Same with like, even though I don't partake in a lot of pharmaceuticals, um, I think pharmaceutical science is pretty bang on. Like if I needed a pharmaceutical, I would probably use whatever science was out there and follow that. However, I choose to not use pharmaceuticals. So it's about choice. You don't have to do... You don't have to do a vegan diet either. You don't have to use pharmaceuticals. You don't have to do carnivore or, or omnivore or whatever. You can choose what you want to do, but follow the science, in my opinion. That's how, that's how I think you end up with the best results. Now, I'm thinking of people more like Simon Hill, who has the Proof Podcast. He follows the science. He does a vegan, plant-based or whatever diet, and he does it with using the science that we have in a more sane way than I think a lot of other people have suggested. This was the issue with a lot of these vegan doctors in the past. Even Dr. Um, Furman, like Dr. Furman, he's pretty on top of the science, but he recommends 1,300 to 1,500 calories a day for an adult. That's insane. Like a lot of these things, it's like, okay, like I get, I get that... <laughs> You don't, maybe you don't trust what people say or whatever, but like you have to, you, people need calories to live, right? Maybe it's like longevity or whatever, but they're going on this fringe science that is not the established like way to eat. You should not be telling general populations of people to eat 1,300 to 1,500 calories unless there's some specific reason for them to eat that way. Um, another person I think in the plant-based side of things who has it kind of more thought out and planned properly is um, Nutrition Made Simple um, Gil. I don't know his last name. He, I think people like him, he's, he's a lot more 
science-based and a lot more, it's not about being moderate either. I think it's just about following what the science says. You don't have to be moderate. You don't have to include every single thing in your diet, like intuitive eating says, you know, I think you just need to go with what the science says. Um, and the science does say, you know, you need enough protein. You need enough of this, that, and the other vitamin, mineral, nutrient. You need these things. And just get enough of it and, and you will be fine. People in the omnivore side of things that I think have it more correct, I would say like Abby Sharp. She's pretty, she follows the science. Um, even though she does the intuitive eating thing and, you know, includes junk food, I think she's more balanced than some people. I would say Thomas DeLauer, even though he's more on the keto side of things a lot of the time, he follows the science. He doesn't recommend, you know, eating steak every day of the week. Um, I'm just trying to pull up some names. I, those were the ones that came to mind when I first thought about it. I'm sure there's other very balanced people who just follow the science and they maybe eat an omnivore diet. Because you can mess up an omnivore diet too. And like I said, you could, maybe you're more at risk for heart disease and diabetes, etc. But you can mess up an omnivore diet in the sense that if you don't drink enough milk or eat enough dairy or eat enough plant foods that contain calcium, you're not going to get that calcium. You have to, you have to get all these things. And so you can, you can screw up any diet in multiple ways. And I do really think just following what is recommended, what is known now, this is our collective knowledge that so many scientists have put together, um, is the best thing to do. And I, I really think this is how I messed up in the past when I was following these vegan gurus, quote unquote, or influencers or whatever, is... I went with this kind of anti-establishment narrative that you have to, that you, you can't believe all the things that these doctors or scientists are telling you. And that screwed me up so much in so many ways. It messed my health up. Yes, maybe I was less at risk for a heart attack or whatever, but I was way more at risk for dental issues and potentially bone issues and who knows, maybe even like brain issues and problems with having kids and stuff like that. Like it puts you at risk following this anti-establishment narrative. So that's kind of the conclusion of my whole thinking over the years of you know, experimenting with plant-based diets and also going towards omnivore diets and getting into that whole community as well. There's anti-establishment people and anti-science, basically, people or people who want to believe this alternative narrative on both sides of the spectrum. And the problem is it's way, way more risky to go with something like that than to just follow the basic science. And the basic science is not saying you have to eat plant-based. It's not saying you have to eat um, omnivore. It's not saying either of those things. It's just saying we know you need this and we know where to get it from. And here are the sources and just go out and get it. And I guess to conclude, to say that one way of eating is worse than the other, if vegan is worse than omnivore, I've kind of alluded to this already, but like, let's, you can mess up an omnivore diet too. <laughs> you can mess that up pretty big time. Um, like I said, if you're not drinking milk or if you're not drinking enough milk, it requires a fair bit of milk actually, or cheese at least. Cheese is an easier source to get your calcium from. Um, in order to meet your daily calcium needs. And the average person, are they drinking that much milk every day? People think it's more absorbable, but that's not really the case. At least that hasn't been found to be the case. Um, same with like omegas. Yes, omnivore diets include fish, but are you eating fish in enough quantity to supply your omegas? You know, are you eating all these things? Are you eating enough vitamin C from your fruit 
um, and veggies and stuff. Are you eating all these things? You can unbalance an omnivore diet. It's just a little bit more pre-planned out than a vegan diet is and requires a lot less figuring out. But you can mess both up. So to say that one is worse than the other, I don't think it's about that. I think it's about whether or not the diet is providing all that it is supposed to provide. And there are so many vegan advocates out there advocating for really dumb diets still. Still to this day, it's so frustrating, like advocating for not supplementing certain things and not needing certain things. That's super wrong. But then on the other side of the thing on of the spectrum, there's people advocating that you don't need to care about your cholesterol numbers and that saturated fat is actually good for you in high quantities and stuff like that. So again, it's just not, and I'm not saying not being balanced because you can be balanced and still be kind of quote unquote doing the wrong things, I think, but not following what we know. That's the biggest risk in my opinion. And I know this is going to be maybe upsetting for some people to listen to, but I had to say it and I think that it could potentially help some people because if you don't follow those people, then you won't get into the trouble that I did 